Hi, do you want to hear a little bit about threesomes, what it takes to have them, how to sustain them, how they can actually help your relationship? Stay tuned, we're going to get into some nitty gritty about having threesomes. <clears throat> so first of all, my name is Leanna Walden. I'm a sex and relationship coach, energy healer, intimacy specialist, and I'm here to help people have the most juiciest, loveliest lives ever. So I'm glad you're here. Thank you for coming back. If you have, um, if you if you're one of my regulars, and if you're new, then please subscribe to my channel. It just helps keep things rolling in my world of YouTube. Um, so threesomes. <laughs> Um, there have been some studies done around fantasies that people have. What are the biggest fantasies that people have? And it was found that threesomes are up at the top. Number one, actually, the biggest fantasy desire that people have is having a threesome, which makes sense because it sounds exciting. And when you've been with somebody for a long period of time, you're in a, a duo, a couple them, you want some change. You want something different. You want to try something new. Many people feel this way. So we're going to talk a little bit about having threesomes and um, what kind of ways, basically three ways here, three ways that you can really set yourself up to have threesomes, three ways that you can save your relationship by having threesomes, three ways that, that I'm going to tell you, three, th three things, three things that I suggest you don't do around having threesomes, just to think about, and three things that um, are really important to respect when you're having threesomes, okay? So, first of all, uh, I mentioned this, it's one of the biggest fantasies that people have. It's a desire that many people um, feel would just be like the ultimate fantasy that, that they could play out if they've never, if they haven't done a lot of sexual exploration. It's up at the top there. So um, the thing is, when you're going into this territory, when you're going into territory where you're exploring sexually with your partner, with your main partner, I'm really talking about people in long-term relationships specifically, you have to be prepared to be uncomfortable, to be comfortable with the uncomfortable, right? You're taking a risk here in your in, in your relationship. You're, you're taking a risk. You're taking risks to move forward into trying something new, to exploring. And taking risks are fun. Taking risks are part of what keeps us alive, keeps our energy, keeps our adrenaline moving, right? So this is this is taking a risk, and you can feel it in your body when you when you start to talk about it with your partner. It's very exciting and it's scary at the same time. And when you actually finally set it up and you're going to do it and you're going to meet the person and have the experience, it's scary. It is scary for many people. Some people not, but many people yes. So know that you need to be a little bit uncomfortable and it's okay. It's okay to feel uncomfortable. It's okay to feel fear. It's okay to feel a little bit nervous about how your partner is going to react. It's okay to feel um, nervous about how it's all going to turn out, what this person is going to be like. You know, there's lots of these kinds of fears that come up. It's okay. That is part of the uncomfortability of having threesomes. Um, the other thing that might come up is jealousy. Now, this is a big topic that I talk to people about all the time. Jealousy has lots of tendrils that come out that you can't even imagine are going to come forward. Maybe you have some of these fears around, uh, oh, am I going to lose my partner? Is my partner going to fall in love with, with this person? Is this going to be the end of our relationship? Um, that person is just so incredible. They're so much better than me. How can I even stand up to that? You know, a lot of these uh, hidden feelings start to come up because it's a big step in a relationship if you haven't brought a third person to explore with, right? So know that that's a potential... Mm, emotional aspect that that could come up between the two of you and just be prepared for, you can't really be prepared for it because you don't really know what's going to happen I mean I thought I was not a jealous person it was all going to be fine there was going to be no problem and it wasn't really much problem for me when there was another guy in the picture mostly so 
sometimes I felt a little bit, um, I felt like, why is he so interested in just the guy right now? What about me? What about me? What about me? That's a big jealousy thing. But when we brought in a woman, there was this more of this competition that I started to feel and really went down into my own self-doubt and my my own ability to to um, offer him as much as or offer him some of the things that she was able to offer him that I had never or didn't know about or didn't know how. So I had to really work through it. You're going to have to, most people have to work through jealousy. <clears throat> and you do this by uh, <laughs> having the experience and then talking about it in detail. Okay, how did you feel? How did you feel through this experience? What things did you really like? I say stick with the positive. What things did you like? What things were fun? And also then talk about what things did you not like? What things didn't work for you? What things made you feel uncomfortable? And come together as a partnership to, to cl clear these things a little bit. To Once you discuss them, they're on the table and then you know that these are things that you can work with. Also, the jealousy aspect um, doesn't happen all the time with every threesome that you have. It it sometimes it it tends to happen with with particular people, and you can't know why that may be, be the case. You have to take it step by step, go into it, and see how your emotions uh, ex how, see see what happens with you emotionally. See where you where you go from that point, because you you can't really know until you actually do it, right? So I'm, I'm giving you some of these kind of heavier aspects first because I just want to address some things that are always coming up uh, around, okay, we're going to have a threesome, but, right? So why do I say it's going to save your relationship? Because this is a step into sexual exploration as a couple, okay? You have to think about it and, and look at it more like you're going to bring some spice into your relationship, Okay. You're not necessarily, over one time you get together with somebody, you're not going to fall in love with that person. You may really feel attracted to them and lustful and enjoy it. And that's all fine and beautiful. But you, as a partnership, if you've been together even for a year, and some people I know try threesomes for, the, for their first time after 25 or 30 years of marriage, you have a long history with that person. You have not only the sexual history, but you have your history of life living together so and that takes time to build and create love between the two of you so this idea that well if a third comes in maybe my partner will fall in love with this person it's very i would say almost not 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 likely at all 99.999 percent i'm never going to say 100 because anything is possible but um it's a way, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's again, it's, it's this kind of risk that you're taking to see how it's going to happen and how, what's, what is going to unfold. And so it saves your relationship because it's an exploration. It's an opportunity for the two of you who have been doing the same thing for a very, very long period of time to try something new, to dive into a place that's going to be uh, exciting and different and, and, and probably and mostly extremely fun, extremely fun. <laughs> um, of all of the threesome, threesomes, threesomes that I had, uh, and I can't even count how many, I had many, I was in a 20 year super exploratory relationship where we had a lot of, uh, a lot of exciting different kinds of exploratory um, experiences. I'd say maybe there was two experiences of everything that was kind of a little bit difficult, um, painful a little bit, <laughs> but not negative in the sense that it destroyed our relationship because it was a learning experience. It gave us the opportunity to discuss what we didn't want to happen or what we didn't like or what we could have done in order to make it run more smoothly. So the other thing is to not put all your power into every experience this is another thing i hear from couples where oh we had the experience we had it before and it was terrible it didn't work out we'll never do it again it's one experience right one experience you're bringing one other energetic being into your threesome you can't really know how it's going to go until you do it 
and it may not go that well. Maybe you don't actually connect that well, or that person is not on the same page as you and, or not in the same kind of energetic, uh, flow as you are, and it may not work and that's okay. Just say, well, it didn't work. Talk about why, how you could do it better, how you can move into your next experience differently. It's a learning, it's a learning. Um, we don't meet our number one, our person that we want to connect with for a long period of time, immediately, most of the time. Most of the time we need to meet many people and go through courting and under, and learning about them and really, um, you know, learning how to connect to somebody differently that we think, wow, yeah, I think I could be with this person, right? So it's the same with the threesome. Bringing in a third is a whole 100% new energetic transformation that starts to happen. So now, why else would it save you? Because it allows you also to play out your fantasies. And maybe you are a couple that have been together for a while, and I'm talking specifically, you know, when talking to long-term relationships, we have fantasies. We have, the threesome is a big fantasy. I mean, there's lots of fantasies that we have, but it allows the two of you to actually play it out. It allows you to go into your desires, go into, maybe you've discussed it with each other, and I suggest that you do, but now you can go in and try it and see what happens. And... It allows you to release this fantasy that you may have been holding on for a very, very long time. Uh, it also allows you to connect with other people on a different level, okay? Because now you're getting very physically intimate with the person and you learn a lot about people, about their bodies, about, about um, uh, different kinds of desires people have, different ways people move, feel, to feel the, the smell, everything changes. It just opens you up, broadens your perspective. And when you take that then into the relationship, it makes that relationship so much more dynamic and your connection, it brings in newness and freshness into the connection between the two of you. So um, a couple things I want to talk about. Three don'ts. Do not put all your power into every experience. I think I mentioned this, but do not allow yourself to get to end any kind of exploration because one experience didn't work out, okay? Not every experience is going to be mind-blowing, incredible. Some will be like, oh, that was okay, that person didn't really work for me. Um, and it's okay, that's just, that's how life is, right? Don't rush it, okay? Keep the going slowly. The journey is the process. The journey is the exciting part, the excitement of the whole, event. So um, you first you discuss it with each other, then you find somewhere that you can meet somebody either through an app or maybe it's a friend that you approach or maybe it happens completely organically, but you open to the possibility and you meet that person, you talk to them, you talk to each other to take your time into finding out more about yourself, finding more about somebody else that you're going to have this intimate experience with. Make sure you're feeling all really comfortable and excited and attracted to each other. Okay. Don't just rush into it. The first person that comes up, it's likely that you won't. Most people do not, but, um, sometimes people are so eager and so excited to try this that they just like, let's go. This is good. This is fine. Their partner's like, I don't know. I don't really like this person that much. And you know, you have to listen to each other. You have to make sure you're both a go and a yes. If it's not a go and a yes, okay. Find someone else. Find someone else. Easy as that. Um, and again, don't put pressure on anyone to do anything. Okay. Let it flow. Let it be organic. Don't force, don't push. It will happen. You can ask each other, would you like to try this? Or maybe it will just happen organically and smooth. But if somebody's pulling away, someone is not ready for whatever you are doing experimentally, sexually, then just stop. You know, stop and just breathe. Okay, let's try this again. And often when you do finally connect to that person, it's, 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 um, it's working out. You found somebody, you both like this person. You want to go into th this, uh, this experience together. There's usually a big rush in the beginning because you're all so excited. And then, then the rush, somehow the desire, you know, slows down and you need to just take a breath. And okay, here we are. We had a really big crescendo immediately. 
talk to each other, enjoy each other's company, have a drink, and get to know each other a bit more and let it flow again. And there you can take the experience into these waves of highs and lows and highs and lows and really stretch it out. And every high you go to will be better because you're spending the time to get to know each other, checking on each other, finding out how everybody's feeling. Don't rush the, don't rush, don't rush into what you're doing. Enjoy it fully, be present. Um, so lastly, I'm just going to talk about um, a few things to do with respect for each other. Uh, know that the word no should be highly respected. If somebody says no, whoever that is, you, your partner, the other person, stop. Just no is respect. You don't even know to know why, because this is a very intimate, delicate place. And somebody's no will likely have nothing to do with you. It will be something with, that's going on with them. So just stop. Okay, let's take this in a different direction, or maybe we have to end the scenario. Um, and also know that if you are really terrified to actually try this out, know that you have the power, okay? So you can at any time say, I have to stop, this is not working for me, I don't feel good, I wanna stop. Again, no. So you have the power to decide if you're ready to take the next step. So just keep checking in on yourself. Am I good? Am I feeling good? Am I okay here? Am I gonna take the next step? Yes, go, okay. And then, you know, take that next risk, that next step. And then, okay, am I okay still? Check on yourself. Be good to yourself. Be, be kind to yourself, right? This is, this is um, a very, again, a very intimate experience. And we, we, we want to enjoy it as fully as we can. We want to make sure that we're understanding everybody. We want to make sure that, um, that we're in a good place, that we're in a good place, and that this is supposed to be an enjoyable, exciting, blissful, fun experience. So I hope that helped you out. I'm going to end there. I'm going to be talking more about this in the future. If you have any questions about this video, anything you'd like me to go into more detail about, please put that below. I would love to hear from you. Uh, this is a great place to, to get the discussion going. And um, I also have 10 stages of sexual explore, exploration for couples. If you want to get an idea of the kinds of explorations that are available for you and your partner, then you can, you can um, access that in the description. I'd love to have you join up, uh, join up with that and get some really juicy information. All right, thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will be back again next Thursday. Much love making.